Good morning. We have left Taos and we have made it to Santa Fe. It is 54 degrees in our camper right now. We don't have the heater on for a very specific reason. And what is that reason, TJ? It's early. It's only nine o'clock and it's 54 degrees. It's gotten colder. It's uh, like 45 degrees in here. It is 3 a.m. It's 39 degrees in here. 37 degrees. Our olive oil completely froze. We are Natalie, TJ, and the Bold and Brave Camo Dog. Three adventurers from Colorado who are on a mission to unearth this country's beauty as we travel in our towable home. We spent the last year navigating and exploring the Atlantic and Caribbean oceans, but now we are shifting gears to life on the road. Welcome to Adventures of a Lifetime. Good morning. We have left Taos and we have made it to Santa Fe. We're about 20 minutes north of the city and we are staying in a boondockers paradise. We are super excited to be here in Santa Fe because we're centrally located to all of these Native American ruins. And now we're going to head into the car and go check out the first stop. The Pecos Pueblo was strategically located at a natural meeting place for people from near and far. The Pueblo was located on a high and narrow hill which provided protection. There was also a river nearby that provided essential water for the community. Over time, Spanish settlers came to the area and took control. They built churches like this one but unfortunately also brought disease with them. After years of oppression, the people of Pecos revolted. During the revolt, they destroyed many of the buildings and churches built by the Spanish which is in part why there are only small parts remaining today. Okay, we just finished up hiking through Pecos National Historic Park and we had a little accident. Apparently Natalie? Apparently I'm getting old. What happened? I was just running through the runes and I felt fine. I went to go bend down a little bit later and my knee felt like all swollen. So like three years ago, I was like jumping in the air for a photo, classic, and I like blew my knee out and it swelled up huge and I couldn't walk for days. And it's the same knee, but I literally just ran. That's all I did. Yeah. And now it kind of feels swollen and hurts a little bit. Like I can't really bend it. So. We were gonna go for another hike today in this area, but I think we're just gonna take it easy because we have another big day tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully it's better by then. So we're gonna go get some coffee and check out downtown Santa Fe Plaza area. Yeah, and uh, let's hope my my knee gets better by then. It doesn't like hurt, it just feels like it has a bunch of like fluid inside of it and it's like locked up. We just need to find her some vegan ice cream. <laughs> that, would, that would fix it all. Here we go. <laughs> some people right there. Hello. Got some coffee from down here. We're at the Santa Fe Rail Yard, which is like downtown Santa Fe, I think. Or a downtown, I'm not really sure. <laughs> but um, it's cute. There's some fun buildings and shops around here. And we just found out there's like an authentic farmer's market type deal on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Today is Thursday. So we're gonna come back on Saturday to check it out. And uh, mm was needed. We're gonna head back to the RV to enjoy the campsite, maybe sit in the sun a little bit, let my knee rest and recuperate, and hopefully it's better by tomorrow morning for our hike. Well, after getting our coffee, we came back to the camper and Natalie made a wonderful dinner. She made us some nice warm soup, <laughs> and we needed the warm soup because it is 54 degrees in our camper right now. We don't have the heater on for a very specific reason. And what is that reason, TJ? The batteries are dead. Not just like dead, like dead, dead. It's early. It's only nine o'clock and it's 54 degrees inside of the, the camper right it's, now. But I don't know what we're gonna do. It's 54, 54 is manageable right now. I don't now. Even know what happened. I'm just, I'm just more curious, I'm more confused as to like what possibly drained our batteries. All right, a little life update. It's still cold. It's gotten colder. It's uh, like 45 degrees in here. It is now 10.30 at night. We have been cuddling in bed, <laughs> but we have figured out 
what sucked all of our power. When I was putting Timothy, put <laughs> when I was putting our gear bags away from earlier today, I bumped a switch. It's the on-off switch for our gray and black uh, heat tape. The frickin' tank heaters were on. We are gonna try to plug it, now that the tank heater's off, we're gonna try to maybe plug it into the car for a little bit of juice. <laughs> the, the, we're we're in a fridge. in a refrigerator. Look at this little dog right here. He's so cold. He's like, why is the world so cold? Well, it is 3 a.m. and I am miserable. I haven't slept whatsoever. Here's Natalie and Camo. I've, I've got to go start the truck. This is, it's 39 degrees in here. It is now 3.30 a.m. and it actually says it's 18 degrees outside. All I want to do is turn the heat on in the trailer and get a good night's sleep for the remainder of the night. But I'm gonna go give the heater in there a shot. All right, here's the moment of truth. It is 37 degrees in our trailer right now. And our olive oil completely froze. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> Look at this. Well, last night was ridiculously cold. I did not expect to wake up and find our olive oil frozen. Um, I am going to go to Bash Bandelier National Monument today to explore. Uh, Natalie unfortunately cannot come because her knee is still bothering her, um, which sucks. But I am only about an hour away, so I want to go check this place out. This is where the Native Americans lived. They built their houses out of the side of a sheer wall or like cliff and you can go there and you can climb up these cool ladders and go inside the houses and explore so that's what i'm gonna do today and yeah i'm excited to go check this place out so i have made it to bandelier and i was just reading that over 400 houses were built here in these walls that were over 140 feet high do you imagine in the middle of winter climbing 140 feet high with all of your groceries or crops or whatever it is that you have? I'm so excited to go see these houses. I guess these permanent settlements began around 1150. This is when the Pueblo people decided that they wanted to start, you know, living here year round. So these were some of the first establishments that the community built, and we're almost to the houses. Going up into one of the houses. It's quite a view. I could, uh, I could imagine they'd had some pretty insane sunrises and sunsets from up here. So it has finally warmed up. I am outside in a tank top and I'm not freezing, so that is good. That is definitely one thing about the desert, which I don't know if people are used to when you're living in other places, like the East Coast or up North or whatever else, the desert gets freezing at night. Like, it could be 65 and sunny and beautiful during the day, but easily go down to 20 at night and like a very cold 20. So we were used to that from living in Colorado for a while, because that's considered the high desert actually. Um, but now we are in the, what's the car? Uh, desert, desert, we're in this, awesome huge open like boondocking space it's all just dispersed camping which is great and nice and some like little shrubbery around which offers some privacy from other campers and it's not very busy there's probably like i don't know 10 or so people around maybe a little bit more maybe less something around there but tj is hiking at bandelier today I apparently can't run without hurting myself. So I am enjoying a nice quiet day in the sun, reading and just relaxing. Okay, this is a better perspective of it. This is the cliff 
And that is where they lived. That is insane. So we're a little further along in the trail now and just here's another example of a small series of houses with their, their gardens in the front. So a reoccurring thought that I keep having while I'm here is besides these beautiful old ruins, this rock climbing would be next level. So we've just finished up the main uh, loop trail and we are headed over to the alcove house and this one is 140 feet high and you get to climb the ladder all the way to the top. I am going to try to film this as I climb. It should be pretty straightforward. So we had made it to the top of the alcove house. This is big cave and then right here looks like the actual house. They went down this ladder and that was their room. But talk about a view. That, that's next level. So I've had an incredible time here at Bandelier National Park. Um, I've always seen pictures of this place so it's awesome to finally come here and see it in person. But now I'm gonna head off to the grocery store because I gotta make Camo some food. So now it is time to teleport to the grocery store. That whole teleporting thing is pretty cool. I wonder if I can just teleport home. Whoa, it worked again. This teleporting thing's pretty cool. Oh no, what are you doing? <laughs> How was your day? It was good. I uh, just hung out and now I'm just enjoying the fact that it's not freezing outside. Yeah, it's quite nice. Last night was pretty miserable. Yeah, so I'm warming up now just in case tonight's the same. <laughs> I figure I'll warm the soul. I hope tonight's not the same. I hope not. Our battery says it's at two thirds, so fingers crossed. Okay, I'm gonna go make Camo's food and- uh... I made you soup, it's on the stove. Oh, no way. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, it is about 6.15. We just had a fabulous dinner. Natalie cooked us some soup. Our batteries say they're at one third. And so we want to conserve them and we're not gonna run our heater. So Natalie had this grand idea we're of- We're gonna go to a winery. We're gonna go to a winery and we're gonna walk I down- I don't think it's a winery. It's like a, a topless place, but we're gonna go It's wine. a topless place? <laughs> <laughs> Tapas, it means small on, small dishes. T-A-P-A-S, tapas. Okay. It's like Spanish. Okay. But then we're also gonna walk around downtown Santa Fe and hopefully come back and still have our batteries be at a third and then we'll be able to run our furnace tonight. That would at be- At least a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more than once. And yeah. A magical little fairy land. This is, this is so cute, I love it. Yeah, it's beautiful. We're uh, on our way to our- uh... Our topless winery. <laughs> so festive. This is beautiful. It's even cuter than it was online. <laughs> is it bad that I pick places to go eat at just based upon how pretty they're gonna be? <laughs> I don't think so. It usually is like a, a symbol of their, I think their so wine too. and food. Look how pretty this is. Yeah, this is stunning. Aww. We don't have a couch in the trailer, so this is quite nice. <laughs> I get to sprawl. Cheers. So I've never done a wine flight. Are you just supposed to like put these shots? No, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's a little like sampler. A little, a little sniff and sample? Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's yummy. Well, it is not a topless winery, which is to say a little bit disappointing, but the wine is great. The sparkly one. It's yummy. Good morning. We are over here at our beautiful campsite still. 
Um, it was another chilly night last night. Our battery is, it's just gonna be dead until we get it plugged into some power. But it was 37 degrees last night. That's the coldest that we saw at least. I did sleep in my puffy jacket last night, so I was a lot warmer, thankfully. So that was good. We are going to go head downtown today and head over to the Santa Fe Farmer's Market. It is down in the rail yard area where we got our coffee from the other day, whatever day that was. And apparently just like a huge farmer's market with a ton of local artists. There's food and jewelry and a bunch of things. We're gonna go check it out, see what it's all about. Maybe explore around a little bit, get some provisions before we head off to our next location. So we have finished walking through the farmer's market. It was definitely smaller than we thought. It's definitely more of like an arts and crafts market, but I'm sure in the summertime it has more food there and like goods to buy. I think just this time of year, a lot of the harvesting is done because we're in no December now. So it's more just like goods. They have some really beautiful things. There are, there are some rings. I'm gonna go back and look at, I think, that I might get a little expensive, but they do look beautiful. So we're gonna, I think wrap up over here and then maybe walk around downtown a little bit more or we head on out. Cheers. So we saw people walking over with like food and farmer's market things, so we kept walking and exploring and we found the goods. We went inside and I found all the farmer's market. There was tons of like organic produce stands. I got some fresh like ground chili for some like spice and herbs to use. Got some fresh made jam. So we are well stocked. It's definitely a huge farmer's market. It's also like a whole like pop-up. Christmas stand area inside and a whole like mercantile area. It's crazy. It's huge. So if you're coming around here, definitely like make sure you check all the buildings because it is very spread out, but there's tons of things to see and buy. So we had a very fun day at the farmer's market. We are back from that. We are also hooked up, which means that we're heading to the next place. And this is going to be a landmark road trip this time because I'm going to be driving the trailer and the truck together, hooked up for the very first time. So uh, wish me luck. I've waited for a stretch of road that I feel comfortable with. We do have a few hours to drive, so it's, it's gonna be a long, a long first go at it. But uh, we're gonna do our little walk around and then I'm gonna get in that driver's seat for the very first time and drive our rig. How are you feeling about this? It feels weird being over here. Yeah? I'm I'm horrified. <laughs> <laughs> now you can see how I felt at first. We're gonna go, yeah, I understand. I mean, I would be scared if I were you too, but now it's my turn to be scared. You're gonna do great. Just drive really slow and uh, yeah, drive slow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes, but I'm feeling very powerful over here, TJ. Good. <laughs> And we're off. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed exploring Santa Fe, New Mexico with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you can join along on all the adventures.